Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, and the women ravished. Half of the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of all people shall not be cut off from the city. The Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. And in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two east from west. Making a very large valley, half the mountain shall move toward the north and half toward the south. Then you shall flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach Azal. Yes, you shall flee, as you fled the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, uh, king of Judah. Thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. It shall pass to come in that day there will be no light. The lights will diminish. It shall be one. It shall be one day which is known to the Lord or the day of the Lord. Neither day nor night but at the evening time it shall happen that it will be light. And in that day it shall be that living water shall flow from Jerusalem, half of them towards the eastern sea, and half of them towards the western sea. And both summer and winter it shall occur. And the Lord shall be over all the earth. In that day it shall, the Lord is one, and his name is one. All the land shall be turned into a plain from Gibbet to Ramon, south of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be raised up and inhabited in her place from ben Benjamin's gate to the place of the first gate and the corner gate from the tower of Hanel to the king's winepress. The people shall dwell in it and no longer shall there be utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And this shall be a plague and this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fall against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while, their, while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. It shall come to pass in that day that a great panic from the Lord will be among them. Everyone will seize the hand of his neighbor and raise his hand against his neighbor's hand. Judah will also fight at Jerusalem. And the wealth of the surrounding nations shall be gathered together, gold, silver, and apparel in great abundance. Such also shall be the plague on the horse and the mule, on the camel and the donkey, and on all the cattle that will be in those camps. So shall this plague be. The nations worship the king. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Thank you. <clears throat> 17. And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, on them there will be no rain. If the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plague with which the Lord strikes the nations who do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. In that day, the holiness to the Lord shall be engraved on the bells of the horses. The pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yes, every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holiness to the Lord of hosts. Everyone who sacrifices come shall come and take them, cook in them. In that day there shall no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Alright, so this is very apocalyptic, obviously. And uh, I'll tell you what, I, you know, I'm fascinated by the end times. I, I, past few weeks, I haven't really uh, listened to some stuff, but uh, I, I did learn something that I, was, I still got 
to dive into it, but at the very end, I did not realize uh, that the people that go through, that make it through the tribulation, obviously without accepting the mark of the beast, all right, they live. All right, so they live, and then these are the people that are inhabiting the earth. And I just, I tell you what, man, I honestly, I honestly thought that it was 144,000. And uh, of the Jewish remnant, um, and I did not realize that there's people that go through. They're saved. They're believers, but they make it through. And I didn't realize that they they may they live through that millennial reign. And I did. I, for some reason, I just did not realize that until I was reading this, and I'm like, man, I, I didn't realize that. Uh, but anyway, we'll get into that tonight. But uh, so. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. So, um, one of the things that's ushering in the day of the Lord is uh, back in, of course, December 23rd. You know how Obama rolled. So, December 23rd, 2016, the United Nations passed resolution 2334 and basically what that says is they do not recognize that uh, East Jerusalem is or ever will be the capital of Jerusalem or, or the capital um, we abstain from the vote so by sustaining means that uh, it passed now, Nikki Haley, I saw in 2017 in her conversation uh, with the United Nations as she was sitting there. She says, hey, new administration, we abstain from the vote, but this administration uh, wouldn't you have used its veto. I just want to make sure that's clear, but the resolution stands and I guarantee it, it will never go away. Um, and what that means is is that when that seven year period, that peace period is over, and we'll see it here, when that seven year peace period is over, the United Nations is going to say, hey, it's over, give the East Jerusalem more coming. And then that's what kicks the whole thing off. That's what kicks that battle on and getting off. Um, and you see that they take over that, the women are, you know, they take over the uh, East Jerusalem. And, uh, it talks about the women are ravaged and, uh, Verse 2 here, I will gather all nations to battle against Jerusalem. Uh, but if we'll turn to uh, Revelation 11, 15. So this is the seventh trumpet, the kingdom proclaimed. It says, Then the angel sounded and there were loud voices in heaven saying, Kingdoms of the world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sat before God on the thrones fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord, O God, the one who is and the one who was and the one who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reign. Go to uh, Joel, verse 3. A lot of stuff in Joel. One of the best books. Yeah. <laughs> Every night. One of the best names ever. You have a best book. The Son. You have a best book. <laughs> proclaim, the, proclaim, pro proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let them draw. Let them. Let all of. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into sword and your pruning hooks into shears. Let them, let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come, all you nations, and gather together all around. Cause your mighty ones to go down there, O oh Lord. Uh, let the nations be waiting and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit and judge all surrounding nations. Put in a sickle, for the harvest is ripe. 
Go down for the wine press is full, the vats overflow for the wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. And we'll see later that the, the sun and the moon will grow dark and all the stars will diminish their brightness. Verse 2, for I gather all nations to the battle against Jerusalem. The city will be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished, half the city, East Jerusalem, so half of it, will go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. So that's what it's talking about um, when, you know, theoretically, when that seven year peace treaty is up. And the United Nations says, okay, the treaty's up. We're coming in. Uh, Palestinians are going to get half the, the East Jerusalem. And they take it, period. And obviously, this is what ushers in. And Jerusalem it says no, um, but you're not getting the whole city. And then that's where you get the battle of Armageddon. Uh, verse 3. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. Look up um, Ephesians 16, some of verse that we're very familiar with. This reminds me of fighting the battle. The whole armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in that evil day, and having done all to stand. So then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. So God's going to do the fight in the end. And we see that um, in a couple places in Exodus uh, when he uh, goes up against uh, Pharaoh's army and defeats Pharaoh's army. And we also see that in the conquest of um, the promised land um, when he goes forth and, and God, is, God is doing the battle and as we see here again the rest of these uh, verses that God's going to be the one that does our fighting and as we know today just like when we read in Ephesians you know our, the, the, the battle is the Lord's and you know when we got problems issues uh, that's we need to take it to God you know our battle says, you know, believers battle on our knees. Now, I'm not saying there's not a day that we don't physically fight, but you know, for now, it's best to fight our battles on our, on our knees. Um, and give our give our problems, give all of our daily issues to the Lord and let Him deal with them. I, you know, only my testimony uh, a couple weeks ago, you know, by on with anxiety. I had to take a stand. You know, it was either eat some Xanax and continue on or say, I ain't going to do it anymore. I finally, God, I give it to you, you know. And, and I just, you know, kept going to the Lord, kept going to the Lord. And I, I left something out. It was funny because, you know, I used to, I suppose to bring my bottle of anointing oil. That's how, you know, if you notice when I start carrying it, it's like, like this deep carrying anointing oil for around all the time. And actually, um, I carried that because that was my substitute Xanax at the time. And so what I would do, man, I, I remember I'd be sitting there in service or something, man, and I'd get anxious and I'd just slide in my wife, no, I'd slide out of my pocket and I'd be like, oh, yeah. uh, and put it back in my pocket. 
but that's what I use them because then we know that essential oils will give you, you know, uh, you know, a lot of um, a lot of people use it for anxiety relief or whatever. But it just reminded me of the Holy Spirit. Well, it is a representative of the Holy Spirit. So every time I will do that, and I cannot tell you how many bottles I gave away with people that uh, struggle with that. I would, I, I mean, I gave uh, 30, 40, I don't know, I, where I don't even, I, there was one particular brand I love, is Rosa Sharon, and they quit making it, but I would literally get like, I don't know, every, every few months, I'd get little cases, like 10 bottles, and I would get, I mean, I remember I gave some, who, who came up and said, I still got it. I remember I gave some to uh, Sarah Ward, and I remember seeing her, wow, I still got that bottle. And I would just, you know, that's what I would do. But ironically, I think I was in the cafe one day. And they didn't have any. And I gave my last bottle away. And I was using it. Even though I was using it as a crutch. I mean, even I was still using that as a crutch. And God was like, you're done with that. Now it's just me and you. So there for a three week time period I, I didn't have that anymore so it was literally me and the Lord and then that got me through that where I, I don't have to have you know have the for the same next hour we're all that you know then it was just you know God you know, deal with it give me peace forgot that last but you know, God gave me what I was supposed to share but I just remember that um, and in the day so then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of the battle. And in that day, his feet will stand on, on the Mount of Olives, uh, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split into from east to west, making it a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it toward the south. Now we know that um, Mark... 11 I believe it was Luke um, is it Luke when Jesus goes to the Mount of Olives uh, goes up I think it's Luke Matthew 17 17 Matthew 17 Transfiguration you're talking about uh, no just when he uh, goes up he's I, I, yeah, I had it somewhere in I don't know. We're going, we're going to find it. How about that? I th I th it's either Luke 11. No. I might be right. Luke 17. At any rate. Going to come split it and they're going to move out 
of through this valley that Jesus creates. Um, go to Mark 11, uh, 23. For surely, uh, someone was said that, you know, I'm not saying that Jesus was tall and high. I just threw this in there. I don't know if I necessarily believe that. But one person says, hey, I wonder if Jesus is talking about this. So he answered, uh, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says that this mountain be removed and cast down the sea, does not doubt his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have. Then you shall flee through my valley, for the mountain valley shall reach to the Zal. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake and died in the days of King Uzziah, King of Judah. Uh, there's some debate that nobody really knows. That might have been a city. They said it might have referred to uh, the Mount of Olives. I mean, there was like five or six different things. That it, it might be a city in Lebanon. Um, there was no real clear what this uh, AZAL is all was. Um, but it says, yes, you shall flee uh, as you fled from the earthquake. Now, I would say, is that Petra, um, you know, in Jordan, uh, but, or the way to it? You know, I don't know that for sure. Um, but there's going to be a mighty earthquake. So where it says, as you fled from the earthquake in the day. So is there a mighty earthquake? Obviously, if he splits that, it's going to be, now is he going to do it through an earthquake? I, you know, I don't know. But the earthquake uh, is mentioned in Michael 1.1. 1, 1. Um, and it was, uh, if you want to flip over there real quick. One of the, it says, uh, that's not the right verse. Go to Joel three eleven. There was a, uh, so uh, Micah talked about a uh, earthquake coming, um, and it happened like two years later, and the historians say it was a magnitude eight, and it just totally destroyed, and they had to flee, so that was just a reminder of how bad this is to the Jewish people, about how bad this is going to be. Um, I might have my prophet wrong, but I believe it was Micah. Assembly, come all you nations and gather together all around. Cause your mighty ones to go down there. Let the nations be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For I will sit to judge all surrounding nations. But the sickle in for the harvest is right over there. Uh, go down. Uh, come go down. The wine press is full. The vats overflow for their wickedness is great. Thus the Lord my God will come, and all the saints will be with you. That's what that was referring to. Uh, verse 6. Um, it shall come to pass in that day that there will be no light, that lights will diminish. It will be one day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night. But at that time it shall happen 
that it will be light. Now there's this, uh, and my secretary printed it out, and I don't want to look it up on my phone, but I might, but I didn't have time to get it. I just found it interesting. Um, do you all know the name of the uh, asteroid that's coming in 2029? Mm -hmm. All right. Asteroid 2029. Here's the summary from Wikipedia. A P O P H I S. And I looked it up. So in 2000, a lot of people say in 2029. Prophetically, I think there's some things going on, 2029, 2030, I don't know. But anyway, the name that I just said uh, means uh, it, it has something to do with, I just looked up the name. And uh, you want to look up the name for me, Joe, and read it out? A-P-O-D-H-I-S. Yeah, just say meaning of the name, and it was demonic. And I'm like, how can you make this stuff up? You know, so... And, and I'm not saying that, you know, but God can use uh, anything. We know that the, when he says the light's going to diminish, uh, I mean, that's the, the moon, the stars. Um, and, you know, we got this big earthquake, and I'm not saying that it's going it, to, it's close, it's as close as a satellite's going to be. And trust me, you know, I've got the ability to look at satellites at night, and there's a lot of satellites, and they're not that far off. They're just right on the Earth's atmosphere. That's how close this thing's going to come. Great serpent. The Great Serpent. So they named an asteroid the Great Serpent. You can't make that up. There's some other things that it talks about too, like destroyer. And it causes, uh, it means earthquakes, and yeah, it, it, I, I don't so know why. Associated with earthquakes, thunder, darkness, storm, death. Yep. So, with that being said, um, this is how close we are. Uh, let's see. So, and I've, I've not kept up with it for a few weeks, but September the 17th is when uh, the third, um, the second, the second Israeli election is. So the first one, they weren't able to get a coalition um, between Netanyahu party and the blue and white party. And then there's uh, several factions, but you've got to have uh, enough of them agree to form the government. So right now they really don't have a formal government. So they had to have another election. So that other election is coming up the 17th. Now Trump and uh, Ivanka, I mean Jerry basically, Greenblatt, who was Trump's former attorney, who's stepping down for whatever reason. Anyway, since Trump got elected, they have been over in Israel brokering a deal uh, with the Arabs. And they, all the Arabs are on board exception of uh, the Palestinian uh, boss. Um, but he's old feeble and if they want to take him out, they'll do whatever they want to. So the deal is, is that to make Palestine a, a one state solution, not a two state, I pray. Because anybody that splits Israel, if we're a part of that, we got problems. Um, but so, and I'm sure Trump knows that. So prayerfully, uh, it'll just be a one state or a two state solution, uh, not a meaning. Israel being the state, and I guess for a one state solution, yeah, one state solution. Um, Israel being the state and Palestine just being over here and not a part of Israel. Basically, Palestine wants East Jerusalem like right now. And the United Nations wants Palestine to have East Jerusalem. We see right here from this prophecy long, long, long ago that uh, eventually it does happen. Um, but um, they have. Uh, all agree they're going to make Palestine the new Dubai. So oil refineries. They've got Jordan to agree for a railroad uh, from Jordan to uh, Palestine. Um, and Trump's been waiting. You know, it, it is supposed to have been, the deal was supposed to have been released like, I don't know how many times now, five. Uh, but the elections kind of messed it up. So then Yahoo asked him to wait. So after September 17th, maybe he doesn't. Now he said, hey, you know, he, he may or may not, but he said, I'm going to release it right after the election. Maybe he waits to see if they can form another government because it may take them three or four months or maybe they have to have another, which would be historical 
another third election because they can't get a uh, consensus of a government. But that's how close we are to what we're talking about here in Zechariah was talking about in chapter 14, um, the end days. And I said 2029, you know, and, and here it says only the Lord knows, the, only God knows when Jesus is coming back. Let's make that very clear. Um, but if it is soon, you know, you've got seven years from the time that peace treaty is signed, and they will build, they will, they're ready to go to the temple, they will rebuild it. It will be a shared agreement between the Muslims and uh, um, the Jewish people on the Temple Mount. I think there's, what, 40 acres up there? I didn't realize it was that big. It's quite a bit of land. Anyway, it will be a shared agreement, and that's how uh, that deal will go down. And once that's done, then you've, you know, once that peace treaty is signed, then that is the seven-year uh, time period that we talked about in the book of Revelation. And what he's talking about with Zechariah's prophesying right here as well. So that's how this close, and that's why I'm just interested in in times prophecy. Um, because it looks like it's, now it might be another thousand years, but it really looks like it's running around the corner. Especially with modern day technology, the mark of the beast, chips, these little personal uh, tracking devices they have us all addicted to. You can't buy silver training. But obviously we know through this that people do make it through. But you're a believer, we get raptured up, depending on your theology of pre tribulation or mid trib or pre wrath, or, or you think you're going all the way through. Um, I pray it is a pre trib. But. All right, so it shall come to pass that in that day there will be no light, that lights will diminish. Um, it shall be one day. So the day of the Lord is one day, uh, which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night. But at the evening time it happens that it. But at evening time it shall happen that it will be light. So let's go to uh, Revelation twenty-one twenty-five. Revelation and John and Joel 
Uh, so let's run, turn to Revelation 22, verse 1 and 2. I said, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street, on either side of the river, was a tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God, they shall see his face, and his face shall be on their foreheads. So we got some type, we got some type of tattoo on our foreheads. We know the Jewish people do. And it might be glory to the like the high priest uh, when I talked, and uh, of course this is coming up here in a minute, but uh, in Exodus 28, um, I talked about uh, holy is to the Lord. Um, we'll see that these right here at the very end. That'll come back up. Also, uh, John 7, 38. promise of the Holy Spirit. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for yet the Holy Spirit was not given yet, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And praise God. In both summer and winter, it shall occur. So over there, you know, rivers, as we know, uh, in the wintertime, the snow, we get more rain, rivers rise. And then in the summertime, some rivers just dry. But this one, I was telling you right here, is this one will always flow. It will never dry up. And the Holy Spirit will never leave us. You know, it's always there. And as long as we keep going to the well, Going to the Lord and ask Him to be filled up. And I know it's, uh, lots of times Pastor David will uh, pray for fresh fire over us, or an impression to what fresh and dwelling of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're asking for that, that living water, that fresh water. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And that day it shall be the Lord is one and his name. Matthew 6, 10, uh, when Jesus was praying uh, to the Father. Lots of times I do pray for the peace of Jerusalem, as, as we're supposed to. Uh, you got the Lord uh, praying right here. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt, as we trespass our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All the land shall be turned into a plain. So it's going to be flattened out from Geba to Ramon, south of Jerusalem. It's just all the hills, valleys there. It's going to be flat. Jerusalem shall be raised up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate to the place of the first gate and the corner gate and from the tower of the nails to the king's wine press. I remember in Nehemiah I talked about all the different gates. Um, 
And uh, but you know, this is just saying, hey, Jerusalem's going to be raised up. It's going to be flat all around Jerusalem. The people shall dwell in it, and no longer shall there be utter destruction. Of what they just are going through and going through now. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. So you look up, um, is is there no longer, there's no longer a curse. You, know, you can go back to um, like Genesis 3.
back in Zechariah's day, the more basically that was currency, if you will. I mean, that was how the wealth was so how many horses and mules and, and still is a day over there. Um, but they will be utterly destroyed. The nations worship the king. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Israel shall go up from year to year to worship the Lord. Now this is where I'll start to get tripping. I'm like, now wait a minute. You know, this isn't what I thought. You know, after this war, and I was like, and you know, I start digging and digging and digging. And uh, so it, says, it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations. So this is after the battle of Armageddon. So those people that are left, those people that have gone through, made it through the great tribulation. Those people that have made it through uh, this God's wrath. Shall go up from year to year and worship the king. My, huh? They're still around. I know the 144,000. I got that part. The Lord shall worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. So basically they're having a big old camp out. So every year you're supposed to go up and have the feast of tabernacles. And build them a tent, build them a little booth, feast of booths, it's also called. And they're supposed to go up and they're supposed to come together. It's like we're coming to church. Supposed to come together and worship God. And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king. Now they're supposed to come from everywhere, all over, once a year, and worship God. No matter where you're at, you're supposed to come up. And if you don't, God's got a word for you right here. And it shall be that whichever of the families on the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, on them, there will be no rain. So if your nation does not decide to go and worship the Lord, we'll have a camp out and hang out and just worship the Lord and fellowship with the other believers, sound familiar? There ain't going to be any rain. We're going to be in a dry season. See where I'm going with this. So what does the Bible say about us? We're supposed to do what? We're supposed to gather together as believers, not forsake the assembly of the church. So, you know, I, you know, I've heard a lot of people, I've got some friends, you know, I worship the Lord and I'm out on my deer stand on, on Sunday shooting deer. That's me and the Lord's time. Or, you know, hey, I'm at the beach fishing. That's between me and the Lord. That's when I, I just feel, you know, I don't need to go to church. And, and that's not what the Bible says. So when you do that, ironically right here, God's saying, hey, you know, we need to gather together to worship me and to be with other believers. And if you don't, you're going to be in that dry season. And that's what happens to us when we don't fellowship one with the other, one with another. You know, we get in that dry season Things start coming against us, and you know when we should be. You know, I, I, you know, if something happens to me, I've got other brothers I can call and, and have people pray. And my gosh, look what we've been doing for uh, Pastor David and Jesse, twenty-four hour prayer. That's pretty cool, man. I did, you know. And uh, so, matter of fact, I'm seven o'clock. I ain't prayed yet, so let's pray for Jesse. <laughs> Uh, Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And uh, Lord, you just brought that to my attention. Thank you very much. And uh, Father, we ask for fresh forgiveness before we come to your throne. So, hey, I'm sorry for the bad things I've done or thought or whatever today. And uh, so, Lord, uh, we do lift Brother Jesse up. And uh, Father, uh, you know, before we started this thing uh, and the Friday night prayer, uh, Lord, they wheeled him into the hospital in a wheelchair. And he had the Friday night prayer where people were praying for him. And then I find out Saturday, he's watching the fight at the brother's house. So he goes into the hospital in a wheelchair, and Friday he's watching the fights. And Sunday he's at 180. 
the Lord we give you all the praise and the glory. That's just so cool every time you just show off. And, and uh, Lord, we just uh, continue to lift them up. We command by the power and authority of the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus over Jesse that this uh, geoblastoma is going to be uh, gone, destroyed. And uh, Lord, we'll just go back to a normal life and go back to work for me. I hope. And uh, Lord, just uh, give peace to the family as well. And Lord, uh, all of us that are praying for it, Lord, may many more join in and may continue to remind us uh, to pray uh, for Jesse. And uh, Lord, just thank you that we get to come to you. And again, uh, fight those battles uh, on our knees. And uh, Lord, you, you, you fight them for us. So uh, Father, just pray us in Jesus' name. Amen. So... That tripped me out, man. So uh, it was described as like a big camp out. I like that. And people are like, ah, heaven's going to be boring. You ain't going to be sitting up on the cloud with a heart. I, I'll be down my buddy's party in hell. Yeah, you know, I would be selling like some biker. But, uh, you know, guys, we have no idea. We will always be busy. We'll be worshiping the Lord. Just think about what he's done for us down here. How awesome heaven's going to be when we get there. He's given us some things in the back of Revelation to, to tell us. But heaven's going to be just incredible, guaranteed. But we know there's going to be camp outs. So we're going to be camping out, over a little fire, and uh, having fun with each other, man. Worse than the Lord. So the family of Egypt, now here he's calling out Egypt. Uh, Egypt, I think it's symbolic just as uh, an enemy. Egypt's always pretty much been an enemy in Israel. Uh, so he's just using Egypt's name here. The family of Egypt will not come up and enter in. Yeah, man, it's 3,000 feet higher than we are. And I just don't have time or money. I don't want to go. Um, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plagues which the Lord strikes the nations who do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And you got to remember, I wonder... It's just like us, I guess. You know, we have those moments with the Lord, and then if we do get out of fellowship, you know, then we, we can forget. And just like Egypt, you would think they would remember what happened back in the day. You know, the plagues, the, I mean, you just say it right here. Hey, you're going to receive some plagues, but it's just like us. We'll turn around and forget. So... He's warning them right here. And he's warning us. Uh, this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations who do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So anybody that doesn't come, you're going to receive the plagues and no rain. So in that day, holiness to the Lord shall be engraved on the bells of the horses. The pots in the Lord's house shall be like bowls before the altar. So everything... You know, everything's God's anyway. Alright, so every, everything is the Lord's. And He's just saying that everything is holy. Yes, every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holiness to the Lord of hosts. Everyone who sacrifices shall come and take them and cook in them. In that day there shall no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So, well, I taught four verses, but of Exodus 28 and you know, the high priest has um, the same thing on uh, his headband in gold uh, holiness to the Lord. So this is the same thing now it's on all the high priest the, you know, the high priest that had that now it's on all of God's stuff, holiness to the Lord. And in that day there should no longer be the Canaanite. The Canaanites were um, the ones Jesus kicked out of the temple. Uh, and that I don't know if I've got that written down I don't but it's in Matthew and it says Canaanite uh, so that's the one those are the guys that Jesus kicked out so there's no longer going to be uh, any deception or uh, crookedness in the house of the Lord that's what saying alright We just thank you that uh, we got to fellowship. Uh, thank you all for all the guys that came out uh, tonight. 
um, to hear your word and to uh, do what you ask us to, to, to fellowship one with another. And uh, Lord, I, I pray um, if they've got anything that they need help with in their lives, Lord, that they just get on their knees and give it to you. And Lord, you heal them, you solve their problems, um, whatever uh, they've got financially, whatever's going on, Lord. Um, we ask that uh, they just let you fight their battles. And again, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for uh, Prophet Jeremiah, uh, Zechariah, and Jeremiah, but Zechariah, and uh, we look forward to meeting these guys one day when we get up there. And uh, thank you for that prophecy. Uh, end times, and uh, Lord, may more people get interested in it. For I really do think it is coming. And uh, Lord, for those that are studying it or teaching it, Lord, just uh, give them that. Uh, Holy Spirit inspiration, Lord, so we, we can uh, understand what we're reading here and, and give it to uh, the people that want to hear your word. They're desperate for it. And uh, also we know that uh, we might not be able to have a Bible uh, in the coming future. That might not be an option. And uh, Lord, so we, we continue to learn your word, memorize it, uh, so that uh, we can be able to share uh, with people uh, that need to hear it. And uh, may my brothers go out this week and continue to bless them. And uh, may we uh, continue to share the gospel. And Lord, we just pray all this in the first name of Jesus. Amen.